All right, so there's some talk that this sneaker might be considered for sneaker of the year, but is it possible to have a shoe be considered for sneaker of the year if you don't actually know the history of which the components that this shoe actually consists of? And this is a shoe right here that I'm talking about, the Nike SB uh, Dunk Low, what the P-Rod and P-Rod, Paul Rodriguez is obviously the person that this shoe uh, is a nod to and designed for because this is um, basically a shoe that is a what the version of all of his previous, not all of them, but a lot of different previous uh, sneaker collaborations that he's done with Nike and a lot of his different models through the years. So uh, first things first, can you guys actually name how many signature models uh, P-Rod has with Nike? Can you name all of the sneaker models and colorways that these shoes right here consist of? I mean, the, the answer is no, I can't even do that. And I've been a long time sneakerhead for quite a while, but let's be real, the P-Rod line has been basically treated like the Mellow line and the CP3 line through the years. It hasn't been the one that's been to the forefront of people's minds when they think of Nike SB. They usually think of Nike Dunks, which his model has always been an original model, not a Nike Dunk. So the thing is, is like, can it really be considered sneaker of the year? I figured we could discuss that a little bit more in this video and then give you guys a look at these joints right here, which I mean, are super, super fire. And even if you don't even know five of the colorways that these consist of, the way that they put it together was just so expertly done that, that they look really, really good. There's some things I like, some things I don't like about them, but let's go ahead and jump in the video. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. Hope you guys are having a great day out there. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching the video. And if you guys are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Collective Kicks is where I post all my sneaker deals through the week from Nike and Adidas and sites like those, so feel free to check that out. This video is actually gonna be sponsored by Kicks World, who provided me these sneakers. And if you haven't heard of Kicks World, it's basically the world's first premier sneaker rental service. And I know some people cringe every time I say rental, sneaker rental, uh, but honestly, there's some use cases that I've pointed out in many previous videos that I think you guys should consider. And to sweeten the pot, 30% off of your first month of using the service uh, if you guys use my specific code down in the description of the video. One of the advantages of Kicks World is if you actually get the shoe, it's the right size, you like the shoe, you don't wanna send it back, you can go ahead and pay out the difference to be able to keep those shoes. So and anyway, thank you to Kicks World for sending these ones over. This is one that I'm gonna keep in my collection because this is a shoe that I really, really appreciate. It's interesting for me to say to you guys that like I really like the design of these shoes when I personally can't tell you the DNA makeup uh, of these sneakers because there's so many callbacks. Even diehard P-Rod fans would probably look at these, even P-Rod himself probably looked at these the first time and was like, oh yeah, where where was this like little element from? Because there's so many different callbacks to different P-Rod models and colorways through the years. Now from the site called Welcome Leads, they actually had a breakdown of all of the different colorways that made up these shoes. And there's 34 different references uh, on both of these shoes to different callbacks of uh, P-Rod models. And there are a couple of them that are used a couple times, like the uh, elephant print is used on this one and it's also used on this one. So there's not 34 different shoes necessarily, but there's 34 different references on both of these that make up the shoe. So that's a lot, obviously, to be able to remember. Even anybody that is a Jordan fan would have a hard time remembering all of the different colorways. And I've collected them for like decades, which is crazy to think about. So yeah, I think that's one thing to note from the beginning. Like you can be a diehard fan of sneakers and not know anything about P-Rod and look at these shoes and still understand that these are crazy looking. And for somebody that's a fan of the What The Dunks from back in the day, I probably couldn't tell you off the top of my head all of the different sneaker colorways that made up the What The Dunks either to be 100% because there's so many different ones and frankly I'm getting old and it's hard to remember every single little attribute tied to that sneaker. Uh, but I do love the hodgepodge sort of look and the way that they kind of craft everything together. And it's one of those shoes that you can get and then after you get them, you can actually research them and then research all of the individual shoes and just grow an appreciation uh, for the shoes. You don't even have to have the shoes to do that. You can just grow an appreciation for the sneakers. And I think that for that reason alone, considerations for sneaker of the years, it, it's actually kind of a smart thing and it does a couple different things for these sneakers. For one, if you don't know who P-Rod is, now you do. And this is an awesome, awesome way to introduce somebody that has a legacy stay with Nike and has had at least 10 sneaker models with Nike. And you might not have actually recognized any of the 10 sneaker models specifically, but now you see these and you know the hype is on the Nike Dunk. And they did a really good job of putting all of the different elements all over the shoe, 
the low top version is really, really nice as well. I like the fact that they chose a low top, but, uh, but it gives you an appreciation for P-Rod and then it teaches the younger generation about what P-Rod had to offer uh, for whatever reason. So honestly, after these drop, I can imagine some of the older colorways that make up these shoes to spike a little bit in prices because some of them are actually pretty dope. Uh, and definitely ones that are desirable or were desirable back in the day and probably have now like a second wave of interest because of the introduction of these sneakers. It also does something really nice for P-Rod because this is a compilation sneaker of a bunch of his greatest hits in a sense of different sneaker models. Now he has that on the base of one of the fan favorite Nike sneaker models of all time for SB and that's the Nike Dunk. So I love the fact that they gave him a fat tongue on it like the Nike SB should have and they really gave him the royal treatment with this sneaker right here. I would say that the materials used on these are probably close to the originals, which is actually kind of cool, but that doesn't mean they're ultra premium or anything like that. You do have a crazy mix of different materials used to create these though, but all in all, the way that they, uh, they crafted these is just nothing but amazing. And when you get them in hand, you're like, holy moly, like they really went all out in throwing in different uh, types of materials and stuff that is very very recognizable to some of the older P-Rod stuff that you guys may or may not be familiar with but like the Mexican blanket pair right here or the boxing glove on the embroidery around here the P-Rod 2s with the white cement and true blue colorway with the elephant print is super nice as well there's definitely a lot of cool details to these shoes and they, and they didn't slack at all the fact that even the the lace sections right here in the middle are different on each side uh, on both of the shoes that's four different types of materials that make that up each panel underneath the swoosh on both sides is made of different materials each toe box each like sole the liners are different one two three four five six seven and then the liner as well that's like eight different elements from sole to liner that you have right here captured in the back on both shoes that are completely different that's 16 different elements just by looking at the butt of this shoe so i mean the designers kudos to them because they i mean obviously they had a big undertaking with creating something so epic but they really really did create something that is the talk of the town and rightfully so and i think that it's it's pretty awesome to be able to see a little bit of a revival uh, for some of the p-rod line i would say some of my favorite elements of these shoes is the swoosh on the side right here from the p-rod 2 playstation of course everybody really likes the elephant print as well obviously the jordan 3 being an inspiration for this on the P-Rod 2 back in the day. But uh, really cool to see that integrated. I really like the P-Rod logo right here on the white panel on the inside of the left shoe. Uh, this is a, a callback to the P-Rod 1, like a black white colorway. But but I really like that they use that pattern on the inside of the shoe. It just looks really solid. The hemp materials right underneath that PlayStation logo is a really nice nod to the P-Rod 1 as well. The hemp 420 colorway. Even the lace dubrays right down here have two different uh, versions of the lace dubrays. I like the fact that they have two different ones. And then you have that P-Rod signature on the back and on the front of this shoe, which is definitely nice. The Nike logo on the back of one, and then Rodriguez Nike SB. So you don't even have a Nike SB tag on the tongue. You have the personalized P-Rod ones, which I think is cool. Uh, I also like the contrasting red and blue liners. The materials are really nice on those as well. But all in all, the way they put these together, I just think is so good. And somebody that appreciates sneakers, uh, I definitely appreciate these shoes. Do I skateboard? No. Should I have skateboarding shoes if I don't skateboard? I think that there is a crossover in the culture for sure. Anyways, what do you guys think? Should the What the P-Rods be considered for something uh, like Sneaker of the Year or not? Should it be excluded because it's just not something that you know enough history about? I think that there is a fine line, and I'm speaking from an older head perspective. There, there's a real fine line of, of the gatekeeper mentality of like, well, if you don't know who P-Rod is, if you don't know how many signature sneakers he has, if you can't name every element in the shoe, if you don't skateboard, uh, then you shouldn't own those shoes and blah, blah, blah. And like at the end of the day, I don't have that mentality, even being an old dude, because then you're just really preventing people from wanting to get in and experience the culture with you. And so, yeah, I definitely don't have a blocker mentality. Like I think that personally, I don't know every element about these shoes, but it makes me want to research it learn more, see what sort of history P-Rod had with Nike. And at the end of the day, you're educating and expanding the knowledge uh, more to uh, a new fan base that maybe wasn't there before. And I really think that's a good thing. It's the same thing as like Jordan sneakers, Jordan retros. Like all the kids nowadays never saw Jordan play back in the day. I got the privilege of watching him on TV. I never saw him in person, but I always watched Jordan on TV. And it was a huge inspiration growing up. Uh, which is why I have a massive sneaker collection. It all started from playing basketball and watching Jordan, wanting to be like Mike and wishing that I had his sneakers. So there's no way you could just be like, oh, let's gatekeep Jordan sneakers. And if you've never watched and saw Jordan play, then you can't buy sneakers. Obviously, they wouldn't make very much money if that was the case because uh, there is obviously a huge fan base of Jordan sneakers. 
and most of them have never even seen Jordan play. The advantage is you do get the sneakers. You do hear from maybe a video like mine that says, you know, this is an original like colorway that Jordan wore back in the day and whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then you guys do a little research, watch a video of Jordan playing in an all-star game or whatever in those shoes, see some pictures referencing it. And then you grow a little bit more of an appreciation for those sneakers. And that is, I think, the thing to take away from it all. Uh, it's not necessarily to gatekeep people out, but it's to welcome people in and have them just explore and learn as much as they want uh, about whatever, you know, that they're interested in. And anyway, that's my rant. That's uh, my thoughts on these. Do I think these are sneaker of the year though? For me, it's not sneaker of the year only because I am a super huge fan of the Amon Meniere uh, Air Jordan 3s. I think that's just a, such a phenomenal pair of sneakers and I'm happy that I got a pair of them, but um, but those ones are unbelievable, I think. The color blocking on them are just super clean. This colorway is wild and crazy and super awesome as well. And a lot more design elements went into this. So if somebody chose this over the AMMs, totally understand why, because uh, it definitely has a lot of thought that went into these. Somebody d dug into the archives real deep and learned a whole bunch if they didn't know uh, what they were getting themselves into. And they uh, created something just really, really fire. Um, anyway, that's my thoughts. What do you guys think? Drop a comment in the comment section. Appreciate you guys for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you guys have a good day out there. Again, subscribe if you guys are new. And if you guys want that 30% off of Kicks World uh, for your first month, go ahead and check my link in the description and that will sign you up. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys back for some more videos. All right, peace guys.